Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video, this time on IGCSE ratios. I had a couple of requests for a video like this, so I'll go through some typical ratio questions. Can be quite varied, which I think is why students don't particularly like this. It's not always a given formula to do X, Y, Z. Right, let's go on to first question. So Helga is knitting some squares. They're either white, pink or blue. And the number of squares are in the ratio white to pink to blue is five to three to two. So white has five, pink has three and blue has two or two parts, I should say. 30 squares are blue. Show that Helga knits 150 squares. So the way I like to write this, write it nice and big. So five to three to two, white, pink. Blue. Now we know 30 squares are blue, so I'm going to write 30 underneath. And what do I multiply 2 by to get 30? Well, 15. And so I multiply by 15 both the white and the pink. 5 times, sorry, 15 times 3, that's equal to 45. 15 times 5 is equal to 75. If I add together all these, so 75 plus 45 plus 30, Again, I'll get to the answer of 120 plus 30, which is equal to 150. Therefore, showing exactly that Helga knits 150 squares if 30 of them are blue to start with. Again, here's the mark scheme, which is not very helpful, to be quite honest. This 30 over 2 times 5 plus 3 plus 2. And I think my way is much more logical. You're going to see this a lot in this video, where I set out really clearly, and it becomes fairly straightforward to actually work out the information you're looking for. Okay, on to question two. Now, this was actually on one of my community posts the other day. So the angles of a triangle are in the ratio three to five to seven. And I want to find the size of the largest angle, so the one represented here. So again, I write three to five to seven. And remember, the angles in a triangle, they add up to 180 degrees. Now, if I look at how many parts of my ratio I have, well, I have 3 plus 5 plus 7, so if I add that together, I get 15 parts. So what I'm looking for here is what do I multiply 15 by to actually get to 180? And that missing number that we're looking for is 12. If you're not so happy about that, you can always use bus stop division. I've been talking about this in a few of my videos recently. And then 15s into 18 go 1, remainder 3, 15s into 30 go 2. So that's how I work out the 12 part. Once I know that, then I can multiply each of these numbers here by 12. So if I do that, 12 times 3 is 36. 12 times 5 is 60. 12 times 7 is 84. So the largest angle will be the one represented by the 7. So here, 84 degrees. If I'm really paranoid about this question, I can always add these together. If I add these parts of the ratio together, I will get back to 180, which is the angles in a triangle. So 84, you can see where you pick up the marks again. The mark scheme is not helpful. This is why I'm doing exactly these kinds of videos. Again, if you want to see more of these kinds of videos, then please do like and subscribe. I do plenty of IGCC content as well as A-level and some IB content. So you want to be staying on this channel for at least the next few years. Okay, question three, completely different kind of question. So a shop here sells sun cream in bottles A, B, and C. So we've got bottle A, 160 milliliters at $3.75, and B and C, so on, and work out which is the best value. So this kind of question does come up from time to time, and so we need a method to do this. The way I generally structure this is I have A, B, and C, and I take the amount of money, so $3.75, Again, I'm going to divide that then by 160. And I do exactly the same here. So $4.75 divided by 200 and $6.50 divided by 240. So I'm trying to work out the value you get for that one milliliter. Again, there's a couple of different ways you can work this out. So if I go to my handy calculator. Again, I'm not going to need every decimal here, but again, I'm going to need some of it. So this one here, Again, let's write this as a decimal, 0 0.02434, 0 0.02343, dot, dot, dot. And you'll see here, I'm just going to do the same 
for each of these calculations. So $4.75 divided by 200. I'm showing you in the moment what I'm looking for is a 0 0.02375. 0 0.02375. Zero That's actually an exact value. And for lastly, we have $6. We're trying to look for the cheapest amount you get one milliliter for. That's essentially why I'm doing this calculation. And we get here 0 0.27087.08. Okay, and essentially I'm looking for the smallest here. And so this is the smallest. So the least amount of money I'm paying for one milliliter, that's why I'm doing this calculation. And therefore bottle A is what I'm looking for. So again, you can see the mark scheme. Again, there's a few different ways of approaching this. I think this is a very straightforward way. Take the amount of money, divide it by the amount milliliters or the capacity that you have. You can work out the cheapest price you can get one milliliter for. Okay, on to question four. We're gonna to get to some hard questions in a moment. So Mr. Zhang's here, holiday expenses are in this ratio, hotel to car hire to food eight to five to six. The cost of the hotel is 2,400. Show the total. Okay, so this is pretty similar to what we've done before. So you've got eight to five to six, again, write out nice and big. So H, uh, CH for car hire and food. The cost of the hotel is 2,400. So what do I multiply eight by to give me 2,400, well, I'm gonna multiply by 300. So I go the same to each of these, I'm gonna multiply by 300. You're gonna see the same method in a slightly different context in a moment. Five times 300, so that's gonna be $1,500. Six times 300, that's $1,800. If I add all of those together, what do we get? So $3,900, $4,700, $5,700, which is then the total cost for our two marks. Again, structure, very important with these ratio questions. Okay, on to question five. I like this question. It's a little bit more on the difficult side. So the people who work for a company are in the following age groups. So either under 30, between 30 and 50, or over 50. The ratio of number of group of number in group A to group B is seven to ten, and ratio group B to group C is four to three. Find the ratio of the number of group A to group C. So this can sometimes be a bit confusing on the surface, but again, as long as we write this out clearly, that's the most important thing. So I've got the ratio A to B to C. So A to B, that's the ratio seven to ten, and then the ratio B to C is four to three. Now I want to be able to compare these two ratios together. So essentially what I'm looking for here is the lowest common multiple of four and 10. I'll explain why I need that in a moment. So if I write out a 10 times table, I have 10, 20, 30, dot, 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 four, eight, 12, 16, 20. So notice both have 20 in their times tables. So what I'm gonna do down here is I'm gonna write 20 down here, and then what do I do to 10 to get to 20? Well, I times by two, so I'm gonna do the same to the seven, times that by two, that gives me 14. And now I look at the four, what do I multiply four to give me 20? Well, that's five, so I do the same to the three here, and so that gives me then 15. Of course, it's looking for the ratio of group A to group C. Now we've got the B kind of in common with the two ratios, we can just read off the 14 to 15 to give us all three marks. Structure, very, very important. Now, once we have that ratio of 14 to 20 to 15, so A to B to C, we can use that to answer questions like this. So there are 45 people in group C, find the total number of people for the company. So we have 45 under the C, what do we multiply 15 by to get 45? Well, that's three. So we do the same with each of these. 20 times three is 60. 14 times three is 42. And then we just add together these numbers here. And that then gives us 147. And then that gives us our three marks for this question, just by being careful with the structure and writing it out.
So you can see the mark scheme here. Hopefully this makes much more sense to you than maybe other explanations that you've seen in the past. Okay, question six, a little bit of a curveball here. It's kind of under ratio and proportion, but again, it's slightly different to what we've looked at before. Some conversions in there as well. So tins of paint are filled at the rate of two cubic meters per minute. How many 750 milliliters tins of paint can be filled in one hour? So my first calculation here is if I have two cubic meters per minute, then how many do we have per hour? Well, what do we do to go from minutes to hours? We times by 60. So we do the same on both sides. 60 times two, then it's gonna be 120 cubic meters per hour. And we want to work out how many 750 mil tins we can actually fill up. Well, let's convert 750 milliliters into the same unit. That's always the key thing with these questions. Now, 750 milliliters, you should know from science as well here, is the same as 750 cubic centimeters. But we don't want cubic centimeters here. We want cubic meters. So this is where students often get confused. Centimeters to meters, generally we want to divide by 100. However, we've got cubic centimeters and cubic meters. So we want to divide by 100 cubed. And that's really important here. If you look at any of uh, some of my other videos that I've done with looking at these units, like similarity, for example, it's very important to look at the units. So if I do 750 divided by 100 cubed, let's go to my trusty calculator. So 750 divided by 100 cubed, I get, aha, it's in standard form, yeah? So 7.5 times 10 to the power of minus four. Um, let's write that out in sort of long form. So it'd be 0 0.00075, I think. So one, two, three, four. Yeah. So meters cubed. And we want to see how many can be filled up in that 120 cubic meters. So our final calculation here will be 120 divided by the capacity of each tin. So 0 0.00075. So we go back to our trusty calculator. Again, we can use the answer key here. We can just go 120 divided by answer. Uh, where's the answer button? There we are, blind spot. And we get 160,000 tins. So that's gonna be our final answer. Okay, so again, the key thing is break it down into steps. For this particular question, which is a little bit different to all the other questions so far, you can get the same units, you can then compare directly. Now, if you need to improve your algebra skills, perhaps you're struggling with some of that expanding and factorizing, it's a big part of the IGCSE course, then do check out the video in front of you, which will go through all that information in about 40 minutes.